Hello, welcome. My name is Cameron Stewart. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at SolarEdge. And today we're gonna to look at small rooftop commercial using our SolarEdge design tool. Uh, let's get to our PV module placement. So next step is put the solar panels down on the roof surface. Now the tool is gonna to default by facing modules to the south. So if we just click the plus PV module button, like we define the roof that we wanna put modules on by clicking it, then we click the plus PV module button. Uh, it's gonna to try to orient things with 180 degree azimuth. But uh, as most of us know, when you run solar panels to a different angle that is the roof, uh, it gets difficult. You can't fill as much and so you lose capacity. And then also it's, it's just a more difficult install to keep square and looking good. So what most people do is they'll find an edge, a roof edge to align to. So we'd probably choose the south facing roof edge because the, those kilowatt hours would prove the most beneficial. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to close this and say um, select tool. I'm going to go back to select. I'm going to select this blue arrow. See this blue arrow? Uh, so I'm going to click that and that's going to rotate my image. And so now it's going to define the azimuth as 217 degrees. So we can start by putting in our solar module. I think very popular solar panels today, especially for commercial rooftop, is going to be some Q cells. So I'm going to say Q cells. Cool. And usually I see like 440s going in or 425s, that looks good, so I'm gonna pick that. Uh, we're doing a tilted rocking system. Of course, if you're doing a dual tilt, you could add that. Uh, the orientation to the racking system is landscape, and it's uh, just one module per row. So that's what we mean by frame size. The height is the level of the racking system off of the roof surface. So if you wanna, or the module off of the roof sur surface. So like, for example, if you're using panel claw, that front edge of the, of the module is probably gonna be about uh, two inches or four inches off of the roof surface. So you can, you can say, yeah, it's got four inches. The column spacing, again, is the spacing between the modules. So that would be your, your mid clip if you have mid clips. I usually give myself about an inch, and then the row spacing would be the spacing between module rows. Uh, and in this case, they're usually around, I think about 12 inches. Uh, there's just enough space to, to, to walk by. Uh, maybe, maybe even eight inches. Um, oh, and then the tilt panel claw is like, again, like maybe a 15 degree tilt. Uh, cool. So that's what I'm going to go with. I could click this button and auto fill the roof and see what happens. So the tool just fills the roof. Of course, I haven't defined any walking wings or any setbacks or anything like that. So we just put as much PV as we could on the roof. Uh, so instead of doing that, let's actually close this window. Let's cancel and let's define our setbacks. So here's our setbacks and guidelines and we're going to define our setback settings. Uh, we can store setback profiles. So if you wanted, like for example, if we were in, right now we're in Roseville, and if Roseville requires something specific, like, oh, they have six feet from eaves, et cetera, uh, then, and then the next town over, which is Rockland, has three foot eaves, you can s save a setback profile. Uh, so that way you don't have to input this information for every jurisdiction that you're doing installations for every single time. So you save, you just do it once, like, oh, Roseville requires some interesting uh, walking lanes. Uh, so you could save that information and and just keep on reusing it. So I'm gonna say, yeah, let's, let's do eaves. Uh, let's say we have uh, maybe three feet. So we just have a 36 inch walking lane around all the outside edges of the roof. Uh, we could even say, oh, I need uh, I need five feet if we wanted to, but I'm gonna say 36 inches. Uh, and now let's refill those modules and see what happens. So plus button, it's gonna, should recommend or remember the last things that we put in, Q cells, oh, but it changed my tilt and everything else. That's unfortunate. So we'll just type that in, 15 degrees. Uh, height is about four inches, uh, column spacing was one, and then row spacing, I'm gonna say 12. 
Okay, and then we're gonna click autofill again, and now it should stay out of these outside edges. And you can see that now we have the three foot walking lanes around all outside edges of the roof. Okay, so I'm gonna click accept, and we're gonna start deleting some modules that don't make sense. Uh, because I, I wanna max fit this roof. And so we can see that we have maybe a module right here that doesn't make a lot of, oops. <laughs> Control Z also does undo. Uh, so I'm gonna delete this one module right there uh, and maybe actually even this whole row. So I'm gonna delete this whole row and this whole row. Okay, and then we see these modules wrapped around the front here. Um, hmm. And I'm gonna also delete uh, this. I'm gonna provide, I'm gonna be nice to the air conditioner people. And I'm going to provide as much access to that uh, mechanical screened off area as I can. So I'm gonna delete all those modules, which gives me kind of this orphan six modules. So of course I'm gonna remove those. Okay, now everything else is looking pretty good. It's taking shape. We're gonna delete this one right here. We might need to provide some more access around the roof access. So I'm gonna delete everything around the roof access. Cool. Fantastic. All right, I think that looks great. Uh, anything else we should, maybe um, shad shadows are gonna occur uh, for these modules. So let's look at the shade impact. So to look at shade impact, we're going to click the irradiance button and we're going to see what's going to happen with these parapets. So you can see this mechanical enclosure, these modules right here uh, is going to get shaded 30% of the year, or I mean, uh, sorry, they're going to produce 30% of their expected energy. So those modules don't make a lot of sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, select this one and delete maybe these two rows. Cool. And we can see that we have some shading over here, but this is 66% of the time. Um, I don't think, I don't think I would delete those, but I would definitely delete these modules because 52% half, half annual production. That's pretty rough. So I'm going to delete this entire column right here. Okay. Uh, I think now that we've avoided all the obstacles, we have a coherent design that makes sense. And I'm, I might actually add one back right here. Cool. Uh, and we have our accepted walking lanes. We have access to the mechanical equipment. I think everything is, is looking great. So let's go ahead and run with this design. So we can see just a synopsis of what what we expect. Uh, so right here we have 418 solar panels. Uh, that is about 177 kilowatts peak. All right, so that's a 177 kilowatt system. And then we can see the annual expected energy. That's 303 megawatt hours where we defined our consumption profile as 120. So I already think that's kind of low. So we're going to go back to our project info and let's just jack that up to 360 uh, for our consumption. So we'll say 360 and click apply. And if we go back to PV module placement, you'll see that uh, the consumption profile now down here is 360 and that's probably closer to what this building would do, uh, maybe even 500. All right, let's go into electrical design.